Hi guys, so this is topic 23, the effects of electrical current and domestic circuits. So there's a bit of theory in this, it's short enough, it'll be one video. Um, I'm gonna focus more on the maths of this topic really, uh, just because the maths that you get here correlate and cross over with, not correlate, that's the wrong word, cross over with um, heat that we've done, okay? So heat comes in here. This is how this can be brought in as an exam paper question. Uh, so the first thing here, the heat and effects of an electrical current, that's basically one of the uh, experiments you do in the exam as well, I'll just give the same explanation. So why does an electrical current in a metal conductor uh, generate heat? Okay, well, if you ever asked this, when electrons collide, okay, they pass on their energy, okay? So then they start to vibrate and they pass on their energy. So therefore what happens is that energy is expressed as heat. Okay, now here we give heat the letter W, which if you remember is also the same as work done because it's the work done converting electricity to heat. That's kind of the, the general idea there. Okay, that's kind of what we're getting at. So the factors that are going to impact the amount of heat produced are the current, the resistance of the object and the time. Okay, because obviously the more current you have, the more heat's gonna be produced. The more resistance there is, the more heat, because obviously the resistance is that it's converting over to heat, and the time, the longer it runs. And that gets to your equation, W equals I squared or T. Okay? Now, Joule's law, what is Joule's law? Joule's law states that the rate at which heat is produced in a conductor is proportional to the square of the current, provided the resistance is constant. You can, for your definition, give this, Okay, P proportional to I, power is proportional to current, okay? But you then have to also say resistance is constant, okay? So you can say power proportional to current provided resistance is constant. That'll get you, because it means the same thing. Now something I want you to notice here, okay? Up here, W is equal to I, or squ I squared RT, power equals I squared R, okay? So what we can do now is, therefore, W equals power by time. You see? Because I squared R is I squared R. All right? So you can, that's out in the log tables, but it'll help you out in a lot of questions. You can go straight to that. Work done equals power divided by time. Power, therefore, equals work done divided by time, or power equals heat generated divided by time. Okay? Now, if you forget that, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry too much because, of course, you will figure it out because you'd have an object here, find your power, and then slot it in over here or something like that, okay? But you can always shorten it. Heat generated is power by time, okay? All right, so first problem. Find the heat produced in a resistance of 20 ohms by a current of 5 amps for a time of three seconds, so heat produced, current squares, resistance, time, sub in all your values, calculator work, you should get 1,500 joules. Okay, very straightforward. Right, next problem. An electrical heating coil of resistance, so resistance is 40 ohms, and a current of six amps. Find the power dissipated in the heater, so we're going for P, and heat energy produced in an hour, so time equals 60 by 60. Oh no, hang on a minute. Find a power dissipated in the heater. Ah, so power dissipated. Oh no, sorry, I'm right, yeah, power. Sorry, what am I thinking? I got confused here. Heat energy is work done. All right, so let's find the power first. So power, I squared R. So I got my power to be 1,440. SO unit for power. The watt. Now I sub that in to get my work done equals PT. Work done should work out to be 5184 joules and there zero is not whatever those are. Okay that's it. So the power is 1440 watts. The work done is 5,184,000 joules and there you go. Problem three. The potential difference is 230 volts. 
is maintained across a resistance of resistance of 40 ohms. How much heat energy is produced in the resistance in 30 seconds? And heat energy produced, W. How much charge passes, so we're looking for Q there, through the resistance in this time? Okay, so first things first, how much heat energy produced, W? I squared R T. We have R, we have T, we're trying to find W, but we don't have I. So now we need to find I. So what equation could we use that has get that could get us I, but it's only missing one value? V equals I R. You see, we have V, we have I, so we can solve this. I equals V over R. Sub in your voltage, which we said was 230, our resistance, which we said was 40. And we should get our current to be 5.75 amps. We now slot this back in up here with all our other values, and we should get our work done, our energy dissipated, to be 39,679 joules. And there you go. Part two then, how much charge passes per second? So charge, Q, go to your log tables, find the one missing value, Q equals IT, that's it. Q equals 172.5 SI unit for charge is Coulomb. Okay, that's problem three. So we're gonna scroll up now to problem four. Now this, I'm going to be putting things down and rubbing them out because I'm going to need a lot of space here. Okay, so a heating coil. Right, um, I'm gonna write the values on the left hand side, as I always do. And then I'm going to be moving over and back. So I'm gonna roll this up a little bit because the screen's gonna keep jumping down and I need the space. All right, so a heating coil carries a current. Twenty amps, and it raises the temperature of so volume. Zero point five. How did I know it's volume? Meters cubed. That's how I knew. From forty four. So change in temperature. Here we're going low to high. So final minus initial. Okay. So you always want to get a positive number in the heat change. That should always be a positive number. So change of temperature is going to be 40 degrees. Okay, we're going from 44 to 40, 4 to 44, so the change is 40 degrees. In five hours, so our time is, did I work out the time or did I just get lazy again? Most definitely got lazy again. Five hours, 60 minutes in each hour, 60 seconds in each minute. So I'm trying to squeeze these in here because I'm going to need a lot of space. Um... I'm getting all these guys from the question. I have the question here. I'm reading it off my page. That's all. Okay. Um, if 80% of the electrical energy supplied appears as heat in the water, find the resistance of the heating coil. Okay. So I'm going to ignore that for the time being. Well, actually, I can't. So what we're trying to find is find the resistance of the heating coil. So we're trying to find R. So R. R. Heat capacity of water. 4180. Oh. Uh, density of water, which is the de density, is 1 by 10 to the 3. All right, okay, so that's all our values there. So let's, okay, all right. So uh, we are told that a heating coil carrying two 20 amps raises the temperature of 0 0.5 meters cubed of water from 4 to 44 degrees in 5 hours. If 80% of electric electricity supplied appears as the heat in the water, um, so basically it's 80% efficient, uh, find the resistance of the heating coil. So we're trying to find R. Okay. Now, what is R? W equals I squared R T. R equals W over I squared T. Now we have I, we have T, we don't have W. Okay? So W is energy slash the heat. So we need to find this. How much energy slash heat was put in there? Okay? 
So work done equals energy. So what equation do we have from heat that would get us that? The energy supplied, okay? The heat energy supplied. Well, we could use E equals mc delta theta. Do you remember that all the way back to heat? How can we use this? We have heat capacity. We have a change of temperature. Now we have to get mass. We're missing the mass, but they gave us it. What is density? That is mass over volume. So what is mass? It is density over volume. And they gave us density, they gave us volume. That is why they gave us density. Okay, so be careful. They give you density and volume for a reason. Usually to find the mass, and that's how you find it. So your mass of water actually works out here to be 500 kgs. That should be a five, not a, a zero, not a six. So 500 kgs. So the mass of water, 500 kgs. Okay, so we've got to find out the amount of energy put in, okay, to raise the temperature up. So E equals, so basically we put in, for mass, we put in 500 kgs. For C, we put in 4180. And for our change in temperature, we put in 40 degrees. And that should give me a value of 8.36 by 10 to the 7 joules. So that's the energy in, okay? So this, however, is 80%. So only 80% of the energy in appears as electricity. So how do we get 100%? Okay, well, 80 equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7. 1 equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7 divided by 80. 100 equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7 over 80 times 100. You see? That's how you do it. If 80 equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7, 1 equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7 divided by 80, multiply that by 100. And there you go. So I'm going to rub that out because I'm just going to give you the answer now. So if 80% equals 8.36 by 10 to the 7, then 100% should work out to be 1.045 by 10 to the 8 joules. Okay, so now we have W. So we can now sub this in back here. So R should work out to be 14.5 ohms. Okay, 14.5 ohms, and there you go, okay? And the trick with these guys, they kind of follow the same kind of format. So again, some reason we got a smiley face on here. How did that happen? Um, right, so I'm gonna read the question and then I'm gonna just write all the values on the left hand side and then I'm gonna answer it, okay? So two kgs of water at 10 degrees Celsius are placed in an electrical kettle which operates at 230 volts. So again, let's under, underline all our key things. Two kgs of water, 10 kgs, 10 degrees Celsius, which operates at 230 volts. If the current that flows in the kettle is nine amps, how long does it take? So we're looking for time here, to boil. Now we have the final temperature boil is 100. How much longer does it take? So a second one, time again for three quarters to boil and then they give us heat capacity, latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so we have all our information there. Let's write it all out. All right, so mass is two kgs. Um, the change in temperature is going to be from 100 to 10. So that's 90 degrees Celsius. So our change temperature is 90 degrees because we're going from 10 degrees up to 100. Our voltage was given to us as 230 volts. Our current was given to us as 9 amps. And we're looking for time here. Okay, and we have heat capacity, 4180. And we have latent heat of vaporization because we're going from a liquid to a gas. Fusion is a solid to a liquid or vice versa, 2.3 by 10 to the 6. Okay, so that's all our values that we were given. All right, so the question is first, uh, how long does it take to bring the kettle to boil? All right. So W, I squared or T, T equals W over I squared or. So that's the first thing we do, state your equation, rearrange. So we're trying to find the energy supplied here. So again, the energy supplied 
bring to boil. Okay, so we're only bringing it to boil. So therefore, E. M, mass of water, change in temperature. Okay, so E here equals our 2 kgs, 4180, and 90. And the energy supplied was 752400 joules. Okay, 752,400 joules. And that, of course, is energy supplied is the same as the work done. Okay, so when you sub that in, T should work out to be 363.5 seconds. Okay, there you go. That's the answer to part one. I'm gonna scooch that off. Right, so the second part then is how much longer would it take for three quarters of the water to boil off? So we wanna boil off three quarters of the water, okay? So therefore our mass will change. So what does the mass equal to? It equals two, what did we say our mass was? Two divided by three, or multiplied by three divided by four. So our new mass is 1.5 five kgs okay so 1.5 kgs and we're boiling it off now so therefore we use ml vaporization so e equals 1.5 times uh, 2.3 by 10 to the 6 so the amount of energy that's going to be used up there is 3.45 by 10 to the 6 joules. So now we have a new W value, if you will. So energy supplied is equal to the work done, is equal to the heat, ex heat exchange, heat transferred, okay? And again, we sub that back in up here, okay? So therefore, T should equal to 1666.7 seconds. 100. 1,666.7. Uh, that should be a second, not a... Okay, so there you go. All right, so we just had to find the energy supplied, the heat dissipated twice. That was all. Okay, all right. So the rest of this topic is fairly straightforward. I'm just going to go through pretty quick and get to the last part there where we talk about kilowatts per hour. And that's kind of it then. We're done with this topic. So... Um, this is a question that could be asked. It's something important to know as well. Why do we have high voltage in transmission of electricity? Well, because heat produces, right? So heat produced per second um, is directly proportional to current. So heat produced is directional, is proportional to current, okay? So therefore, what they do is when you leave the power station, this drives up the voltage, okay? But drives down the current, okay? So therefore, the power stays the same. That should just be I, sorry. Then before it goes to your home, when it gets to the transformer two, it drives up the current and drives down the voltage. Thus, the power stays the same. That's how, you see? So you waste less energy in the power lines, okay? So when, when it leaves the power station, it hits a transformer that increases the voltage, decreases the current, so you lose less heat. And then when it gets, before it gets to you, it changes it down, okay? Less energy wastage, and that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, chemical effect, um, electrolysis, okay, it's basically, you can use it for uh, separating water into its two elements, basically, all right, uh, voltmeter, don't worry too much about that, okay, electroplating, extracting metals from their ores, three kind of things, so no, no two of these, they'd be helpful, what is an ion, all right, so again, this is back to junior cert, an atom or molecule that has lost or gained one or more electrons, okay, just because, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really been asked. It's it's kind of there, but it could be asked to remember what an ion is, okay? It is either lost or gained an electron. More than one electron. One or more. Sorry, let's be correct here. Uh, let me see here now. Not really too much here to worry about. Semiconductors we'll come back to. This is just charge carriers, different types of charge carriers. So, the graphs that you need to kind of know, they're kind of, just be aware of them, all right? So, for a metallic conductor, the current is proportional, all right? To the voltage so you get the straight line okay that you have here uh, for a filament bulb you should have a straight line until the bulb starts to heat up and then of course the, the curve goes off for an ionic solution they're proportional again 
okay? For an uh, inactive electrodes, of course, it takes time, so that's why it doesn't start at zero, zero point, okay? Right. Uh, for a vacuum, don't worry too much about that. Uh, here we go, for semiconductors, the next big one here, okay? So what happens is, is that it overcomes the depletion region, okay? And then it, the current shoots up, all right? So we'll be covering that in the next topic. All right, domestic circuits. Yeah, so this is a bit out of date. These, don't, these aren't really used anymore, but the old fuses basically, well, they're used actually in, um, so in small objects. So for example, they're not really used in households, but they are still used in uh, circuit building. Um, so in the multimeters that you have, that you've seen in class, they often have uh, fuses like this. And what they are is they're a small casing with a, a tiny tin wire. Now what happens is that if the power into the circuit is too much, the current increases and it melts the wire and that cuts the circuit and saves the device. That's how it works, you see? Um, for a plug, it's been a long time, but no harm going over it. Brown is the live wire. Blue is the neutral. Green and yellow is the earth. Current goes in the live wire, so the fuse is attached to the live wire. Okay, so the fuse goes on the live. Current goes in there, out the neutral. Okay, that's the way it works. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, all right, don't really worry too much about any of the rest of it, really. Okay? It's all kind of junior search stuff, guys. I'm assuming you've all kind of done it before. If not, you can always pause the video here and kind of read about it if you wish. Okay? I right, see so you can always pause the video and read that. Okay? But no very need. Okay, so the last thing here that could come up. Kilowatt hour. So the kilowatt hour is the unit of energy used by the ESB. One kilowatt hour is the amount of energy used by a thousand watt appliance in one hour. Okay. The electricity meter in the house is used to measure kilowatt hours. All right. So how they work out what you did is the number of kilowatts multiplied by the number of hours, and then they charge you per kilowatt, and that's how they work it out. So here you go. I have one, two, three, three questions. We'll fire through them quick. These are very short. You usually get them in question five. Um, they're not that difficult. Okay. You should find them fairly straightforward. All right, so problem six, a heater has a power rating of 1,000 watts. It operates at a mains of 230 volts. What current does it draw? Okay, so very straightforward. P equals VI, I equals P over V. So therefore the current is 4.35 amps, done. What size fuse should be put in? A 3 amp or a 13 amp? Well, we can't put in the 3 amp because it needs 4.35, so therefore, 13 amp a few fuse, okay? Because if it goes above, um, it's if, if, if it's always going to be 4.35 3, amps, it'll always trip the 3 amp fuse, so you need to go above, okay? All right, so problem seven. Uh, 2,000 watt appliance, so that's power again. Oops, I don't know why that didn't come out. Power is 2,000 watts operates for three hours so time is three i oh, know we're doing kilowatt hours so how many kilowatt hours of energy does it use that's very straightforward okay so yeah so the tablet's doing this again it always does this on the last page so number kilowatt hours is equal to 2000 no sorry kilowatt hours so therefore power is equal to two kilowatts so 2000 is only is a uh, 2000 two kilowatts so two times three so number of kilowatt hours, six. There you go, six kilowatt hours. K for kilo, W for watt, H for hours. And the last question here, a 75 watt lamp operates for 40 minutes. So we gotta convert that to, oops. We gotta convert minutes to hours here. So that's gonna be 40 over 60. So 0 0.6 continuous hours. How many kilowatt hours of energy does it use? So therefore number kilowatt hours equals two. Oh, we gotta convert this to kilowatts as well. So that's gonna be 0 0.075 divided by a thousand. So therefore 0 0.075 times 0 0.6 continuous means we have 0 0.0 five kilowatt hour and there you go all right so that's the end of that topic guys um 
Uh, sorry about the, the video keeps jumping up. I don't know why it does it. That's the end of that. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section or on the Edmodo page. And I'll get back to you. I have one more topic to do for electricity, and that is the topic of electricity finish.